Hello everyone, I am Cheryl with JJ Bean Designs and I am super excited to paint with you guys tonight. Tonight we are going to do something that's new to me, but I love it already. I've been working on these lovely chairs behind me. We're actually going to paint fabric tonight. I'm going to show you guys how you can use Dixie Belle paints to paint your fabrics and redo your chairs. How awesome is that? When you guys come on, please tell me that you're here. Say hello. Let me know where you're tuning in from. I'm up in New Hampshire. It was super chilly here today, actually. Kind of, for me, super chilly. I don't know why I live in the north. I don't know where I live in a place where the cold hurts my face. Isn't that the meme that you see everywhere? <laughs> All right. Hey, Dixie Bell. So Dixie Bell is on tonight. Uh, so if you guys have questions that I don't get to while I'm painting, Dixie Bell will answer them for you. Hey, Lisa in Ontario. Hello over in Ohio, Missy. Um, so you guys, I am actually like blind as a bat with these things on even. So, but please tell us where you're joining in from and say hello. So we're going to be doing fabric on chairs. These two chairs are actually from my husband's poker table and I can't stand them, can't stand them. I hate them, I've hated them forever. And tonight I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna paint them, I'm gonna paint them, I'm gonna paint them really cute. So we have Sherry in Texas, Nahili in Houston. I hope I didn't just butcher your name, I believe it's Nahili um, in Houston. Patricia in Florida, Lisa in South Carolina, Cha Cha from California, hey! Hello everybody, Columbus. All right, so. People say, can you paint fabric? You can paint anything with Dixie Belle. And fabric, if you guys, if you guys have ever painted with anything um, for Dixie Belle, you'll know if you get it on your clothes, it's really, really hard to get out. The reason being is because it paints fabric awesome. So, a little start of what we did. I started, I'm gonna bring this forward a little bit, guys. So if I jump out of the screen, I think it's easier for you guys to see what I'm doing than to see my face. So I wanna show you guys what I started over here. So let's get a little closer here, and I'm gonna see if I can bring this down just a little bit um, to kind of give you guys a better look at it. Whoa, sorry guys. Got you a little seasick probably with that one. All right, so I started this already today. I put my first coat on, and what we're using is, we're gonna be using Hurricane Gray. This is my really, really used Hurricane Gray, and it's actually already pre-mixed for me. So when you go to paint your fabric, I'm going to lean down to talk to you guys. So <laughs> when you go to paint your fabric, the biggest thing that I can tell you is your paint used to be half and half. So you use half paint, half water. All right. And there's a technique to do it too. So I'm going to bring this back a little bit. Um, but so you're going to use your paint. It's half water, half paint. I have already pre-mixed mine and I keep it in here because I'm going to be doing all of my chairs and I wanted to have it pre-mixed so I didn't have to keep going on with it. All right. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and I'm gonna show you the one that we already did. So this already has one coat on it, all right? Now, now that it has the one coat on it, what we're gonna do is we're gonna sand it. You wanna sand in between coats. This is our Dixie Belle sanding sponge. See how awesome these are? They're pliable, they move, they get into crevices, they get into everywhere you need them. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna sand this thing. And you're just gonna lightly sand it just like you do with your furniture. You just want to take that crunchy off the top, right? So somebody asked me already, how many coats of paint are you going to put on this thing? This is probably going to be three coats of paint. It's going to be three coats of paint, and then at the end, I'm going to show you what I'm going to do to make sure it stays nice and soft. So um, that's the other thing people ask. They think that if you paint it, it's going to be hard. It's not going to be hard if you lightly sand between your coats and you use the paint broken down as a 50-50 consistency. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna top it with the Easy Peasy Wax. This is our spray wax, and it cures very, very fast, and it works very nice to keep it nice and soft and supple. All right, so let's gonna do this real quick before we get to that first coat on that other hey, on the other chair with you. So guys, I just have to tell you, it's already soft. I did that first sanding, and it's already soft like it didn't, even have that paint on there, which is good because this is gonna be back in my husband's poker area. Um, I say it's a poker area, but my son paints on here too, which is, that's why these are on here. So I'll have to redo the whole chairs themselves. All right, so let's get started over on this side and let me move the camera. I want you guys to be able to see what I'm doing. First thing is, is I am using my Dixie Belle Oval Medium. I love this. I started with this one already. 
Um, is it the same for leather? Yes, you can paint with leather as well. You just want to be careful when you're sanding that you don't go too far down into it because you don't want to mar your leather, but it will keep it nice and soft and supple. Matter of fact, if you go to our um, Chalk Paint Enthusiast page, the, the link is in the description. If you go to the link in the description and you search on that group, join the group because you'll learn a lot of things on there. And if you search leather, just put leather paint and you'll find all kinds of things that people put up there where they have painted leather with Dixie Belle paints. All right, guys. So this is what we're going to use is our Dixie Belle Oval Medium. I had it wrapped in cellophane because in between painting, I wrap my brushes in cellophane because I don't want them to dry out on me. I like my brushes to stay nice. I have my continuous mister bottle. If you don't paint with a continuous mister bottle, oh boy, are you missing out. So two reasons for this. First of all, this is going to help prime my brush. So that's what we do. We want to slightly dampen our brushes. But before you paint your fabric, you just want to give it a nice misting. You want that fabric to be nice and ready to just take on that paint. So I am going to turn to the side over here. And we're going to spray that down. Guys, I'm going to take this uh, chair right here. You can't see me on screen right now, but this one over here. I'm going to take it off of the table so that we have more room to work. All right, here we go. So I'm going to break open my Hurricane Gray. What's the name of the site again? It is Chalk Paint Enthusiast. It's actually the Dixie Bells site where we have a lot of brand ambassadors. We have people like myself who paint and come on and teach you guys, as well as people just like you guys that learn by using, by trial and error, by watching videos. It's in the description of this video. If you click on it, it's a Chalk Paint Enthusiast. You can get onto that group and learn a lot of stuff. So the first thing I want to do, because I mixed this earlier today, is I am going to kind of just swirl it around and make sure it stays all mixed up, right? The other thing is, is I paint from a bowl. So I'm going to pour a little bit into a bowl. And then I want you guys to see this consistency. It's literally a half and half consistency. That's the kind of paint that I'm using. Someone do a paint on, so, oh, you want somebody to do a painting, a video on painting vinyl. Hey, that's a great suggestion. Maybe we can throw that out there for uh, one of the brand ambassadors or somebody else to do the vinyl for you. That would be awesome, right? All right, so see the brush? I have my paint loaded on the brush, and I'm going to take it, and I'm going to take it in a circular motion. You don't want to just paint across it, because then you're just painting those upper layers of this chair. We want to get that paint down into those fibers, right? We want the paint to go in, mix it, and mix it, right? And go into those fibers. So you're going to do the 50-50, and you're going to do the circular motion. Can you guys see how I'm doing that circular motion? I'm just kind of rubbing it in. I'm making sure that that paint gets into that fabric. So I wanted to do this in gray because I have furniture in the same room that has all like the grays and the whites and and I thought about it and my son is um, special needs and he paints and he gets stuff everywhere so I'm like yeah I would absolutely want to go ahead and uh, put something darker on there so as he gets stuff on it it's a little easier to kind of clean up and do what I need to do now I'm getting paint on the chair itself I'm not worried about it because I'm absolutely going to be painting these chairs after I just wanted to show you guys the fabrics tonight, so I'm not really concerned that I'm getting it on there. Could you take the seats off and paint them? Absolutely. So you're going to continue using a circular motion because you want to work that paint into that fabric. Um, if you just paint across the top, like I said before, you are just going to paint the top, and you want it to kind of get in there, right? Get in there and how it needs to go. So if you're just joining, my name is Cheryl, and I am with JJ Bean Designs, and we are painting the fabric on chairs tonight. When you come on, please say hi. Let us know where you're watching from. And the other thing is, is I love every video that I do, I ask everybody what their favorite color is because I love hearing everybody's favorite colors. So um, mine is typically vintage duck egg, stormy seas. I love the moonshine metallics as well. The deep woods is like a good one. But for my neutrals, I love using the hurricane gray. All right, so you want to keep moving it around. So I got to go up underneath here because my fabric wraps underneath, so I want to make sure I get up underneath. 
And again, if you can see, I'm literally just pushing the paint in circular motions into the thing. Hi from Virginia. Mermaid tail. Oh, mermaid tail is really, really, really good. Yes, I love mermaid Mer tail. Chacha said my grown-up name is Cheryl. <laughs> Um, so my grown up name is Cheryl. My not so grown up name is, um, a nickname that my parents gave me because I was kind of like one of those kids that was always at their pants string. Help, 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 help. So it was Itchmagitch. That was my nickname. And then hi in Massachusetts. Hey, Joy in Massachusetts. I am in New Hampshire. When you come on again, let us know where you are coming in from. I always love to hear what the weather is like in other parts of the country, too, because it's always neat to hear what everybody else says, where they're at. Muscadine wine. Yes, muscadine wine is a great color. So, muscadine wine mixed with the aubergine makes a beautiful plum color, or you can blend it, the muscadine wine, into the aubergine is a beautiful, beautiful color. In the Navy. In the Navy is an awesome color, too. I like to use the In the Navy with um, Midnight Sky as the starter and then blend it up into the In the Navy. I just think it gives, like, a really, really dramatic kind of blue and black look. It's the low 30s in Virginia. Ugh. It's, it's, like, cold here, too. We actually had our first, like, really, really deep, deep freeze last night and wasn't happy about it. Really wasn't happy about it. All right, so I'm going in and around the edges here. I'm going to swing around the camera. Sorry, guys, step in front of the camera. I just need to get around this edge. All right, I'm running out of paint, so I'm going to pour a little bit more in here. All right, and... So again, painting the fabric, you want to go in a circular motion. You want to get that paint to go into that fabric because that fabric needs to not just be on the very top. You want it to kind of go in there and get to where it needs to be so that it actually stays in the fabric. You don't want it resting on top. That's where it'll start to get a little hard on you and stuff. So and you use a 50-50 of your paint. I'm using Hurricane Gray. I'm going to turn this baby around so we can get to this back here. I'm going to keep it on my table, though, first. I don't want to knock it over, right? And we're going to paint it in and on here. Now, obviously, in this back, I'm having a little trouble doing circular motions, so I may not keep complete circular motions, but as much as you can, use the circular motion so that you can get that into the fabric. You want to work it all in there. Oh. I love that color. It's going to go so nice in my, in our back room. All right, so I'm going to flip this thing around and show you guys. Yes, it's 50-50 paint and water. So half paint, half water. And I missed it. What kind of material is, is the chair seat? It is just a fabric. It's literally like, a, um, I'm trying to explain. It's almost like a velour feeling fabric was on here. Oh, Dixie Belle had a great question. What color would you paint your dining room set? Me, personally, I want to hear everybody's questions on answers on this too. So me, personally, I have, my house is set up like a chalet almost. It's got a big open thing with open beams and stuff. And I would probably use buttercream with maybe like distress it out a little bit just because to give that nice light kind of farmhouse-y, cabin-y kind of feel to it, so... All right, guys, I'm going to turn this around so you guys can kind of see what we just did with that. So we've got this whole first one done. So this is our first coat. I'm probably going to wind up doing three coats on these. But this one, I'm going to absolutely, we're going to take this one down. And what we're going to do is we're going to bring the one that we already started that I did the first one in. And then we're going to, the first coat on, and then we're going to do our second coat since we've already sanded it. All right, let me put this down. And let me grab the other one. Oh, how's that? Oh, good. Good, good, good. Caviar and fluff for your kitchen side dining room set. That is awesome. All right, so if you're just tuning in, this is actually, the first coat is already dry. I put this on earlier today. And then, then what we also did is I went in 
And I took a sanding sponge. These are the Dixie Belle sanding sponges. And you're just going to lightly sand it. I have already sanded it, but I just want to show you guys. It is so soft. Like, you don't feel the paint on this because the sponge actually takes it and makes it smooth again. And then I had somebody else ask, well, once you sit on it, is the paint going to come off? No, the paint does not come off. If you've ever gotten this paint on your clothes, it does not come off. We joke around that I buy new jeans all the time. And see, I wear my jeans to do all these. And every time I have a new pair, I always forget, like these are new ones. I always forget to change before I come and paint. And sure enough, it's Murphy's Law. I get the paint on. You can't get it off. So it does work, work, work. Are a few coats always needed, Sherry said. So I'm going to give you a little hint when you're painting, whether you're painting furniture, fabric, um, metal, you're painting walls, you're painting glassware, you're painting anything. It is always best to do multiple light coats than one huge big coat. So we are going to do multiple light coats on this because I want it to be really vibrant. This was a yellow seat beforehand, and I can still see some of the yellow coming through because it's a 50-50 paint mix. So I'm definitely going to do that. I know I'm getting paint on my wet chair, white chair. That's okay because I'm going to paint the chairs after. I'm going to take the seats off. I just left them on here to paint for, to show you guys how to paint fabric. But thank you, Linda. I know I'm getting them on the chair. That's okay. We're okay with that, and I'm getting it all over my chair. <laughs> When I actually go to do the seats, I'm going to take them off when I actually go to do the chair itself. So I just want to make sure that I get all the edges that I've already painted with the sponge because I want a nice smooth surface to start again. Very, very soft. All right. So I'm going to pour a little bit more paint in here. And remember, it's 50-50. I'm using Hurricane Gray. So what you're doing is you're doing 50-50. 50% paint, 50% water. Mine is pre-mixed because I'm doing a whole set, so I wanted to just go ahead and have it pre-mixed. All right, I'm going to take my brush. I'm using the Dixie Bell Oval Medium. And again, I'm just going to turn it and swirl it and push it into the fabric. Let the fabric accept the paint. Gosh, I love this color. This is like one of the best grays that we have. Um, I like this. Um, I love Gravel Road, too. Gravel Road's a really nice paint, too, color. Um, Manatee Gray. I'd like to know, what is everybody's favorite color of the grays that we have? Let me move that. And again, like I said, you want to go in a circular motion. And I'm actually going to flip over to the other side, guys, because it's kind of awkward the way that I'm painting because I'm a righty across the camera. All right, so you want to go in circular motions because you want your fabric to accept that paint. You don't want it just sitting on the top of it. You want to kind of get it into that fabric. And no, it does not ruin your brushes. Somebody else asked me that as well. It does not ruin your brushes because your fabric is soft and your brushes just kind of go with the flow, right? Oh, I love this. So I personally am not an upholsterer. I can't reupholster furniture. I have no patience for it. I don't have the skill for it. I've never learned it. So for me, this is a great way for me to do an update on my furniture and make sure that it stays beautiful in the color that I want it to be, right? What a great way. All right, so another one of my favorite grays, Driftwood. Driftwood's another one. And if you don't know the colors of the paints and you're looking for colors, you can reach out to myself or anybody else um, through Dixie Bell and they can do that for you. And again, like I said before, if you're looking for tips on how to do different things, join our Chalk Paint Enthusiast group, which is in the description. And there's lots of brand ambassadors on there, people like myself who come on and teach you guys how to paint, people like you, people like everybody else that just learns all different things. Lynn said, I love upholstery. Lynn, I don't know how close you are, but you can come teach me if you'd like. I'd love to learn how to upholster. <laughs> I can paint up a storm, but upholstering, not so much. So Dixie Bell asked a question. Who has painted a chair before? Um, or fabric, a chair, anything that has to do with your dining. I'd love to see what you hear. 
tell me, what did you paint it with? How did you paint? And go from there. How long do you have to wait for the wax before you can sit on it? So let me go over the Dixie Belle wax right here real quick for you. So we're going to use the Easy Peasy Spray Wax. I'm going to go over it at the end with you on how to use the spray wax because it's really important that you follow the directions. But it does cure within six hours. It dries in 30 minutes but cures in six hours. So you know what that means? In six hours, you can sit on your furniture and relax, okay? The biggest thing is making sure that you wait between coats of drying paint to put your next coat on because you should lightly sand between each coat that you put on here so that you make sure you don't have any hard surfaces and that it's nice and soft. All right, let me grab more paint. Grab a little more. That's the consistency. It's half and half. Hi, Lisa. No problem. No problem. So um, the Easy Peasy Spray Wax, if you haven't used the spray wax before, the fabric is like the perfect application for it. So Tatcha said she did her patio furniture. Nice, nice, nice. I love it, I love it, I love it. I'm going to come around this side. What color did you do your patio furniture in? And did you use Dixie Belle? I'm hoping you did. Dixie Belle paints are so versatile, too. Like, I love the way that you can use them on so many different things. If you guys didn't know, you can paint on glass. You can paint on fabric. You can paint on wood, obviously, for furniture. You can paint on metal. You can paint just about anything, actually, with Dixie Belle paints. Pretty awesome, don't you think? All right, again, I am going to flip this baby around so I can get to the back of it. I am loving this. Like, this is, like, going to bring up a whole new life to my room. All right, I'm going to turn it, actually, this way so that I can reach it from this direction. Let me see. I paint my chairs with DB before reupholstering. That's a great idea. Typically, I would actually take these seats off and paint them off of here, but it's hard to show you guys how to put the paint on with them off of here, so I left them on. But when I go to paint these chairs, see, I'm getting paint all over them, but I don't care because I'm actually going to paint these chairs anyways. And when I go to paint the chairs, I'll actually take the seats off and paint them. So again, you're going to go in a circular motion because you want to work that paint into that fabric. Circular motion. Another circular motion. Boy, I'm really getting paint on this chair. <laughs> it's a good thing I'm going to be taking it off and painting it. All right, so I see a couple spots that I think I missed. I'm going to want to come across here. Kind of making that circular motion in here. All right, so I'm going to flip this back around so you guys can see what we've done. See, and this is why I wear aprons. I wear aprons because I constantly do this. And if I don't, I do it on my clothes. And then my clothes look like this, and I can't get the paint off, which is no bueno. All right. Flip this back around. All right. So this is the second coat. We did our first coat on this. I'm going to back this up just a little bit so I can kind of talk while we do this. So I did my first coat on it earlier today. And real quick, Kristen said, so easy to just reupholster. Why would you paint them? For me, upholstering is not that easy. For me personally, I'm not really skilled at it. I actually need somebody to teach me. I can paint up a storm. I could paint scenes on things. I can paint like there's no tomorrow but I can't reupholster. And sometimes people just don't have that ability to go and reupholster, right? So this is a great option to do besides reupholstering. All right, so I did my first coat. Again, it's 50-50 paint. Did my first coat doing the circular motions. I let it dry. It took about maybe four hours to dry because of the amount of water that I have in there. So it's a 50-50 paint thing. Then when it dried, we took it, and I used this sanding sponge. So these are Dixie Belle sanding sponges. They're great because they're pliable in all different ways. You can use them in all different areas. 
and we just did a light sanding right over the top of it. You definitely want to sand in between your coats. Did you wet the seat before the second coat? Trisha, I did not wet the seat before the second coat because it's a 50-50 paint. I only wet it originally to let the initial paint get into the seat and do what it needed to do. All right, so you want to sand in between each coat so that it stays nice and soft for you. Sheila, yes, 50 paint, 50% 50 water, so 50-50. And then I tend to use a bigger brush only because, in all honesty, I'm impatient and I want to cover more area. So I use my Dixie Belle Oval Medium and I just do circular motions and it helps push it into the fabric, literally just like this. You want to just push it into the fabric because you want it to accept all that paint that you're putting on there, okay? All right, so you're going to sand in between coats and then when we're done, this is where all the magic happens, guys. All right, let's talk some easy peasy wax, okay? Easy Peasy Wax is the bomb. So there's lots of these ways that you can use Easy Peasy Wax, but I have to tell you, their fabric application, this is the perfect, perfect wax for the fabric application for two reasons. First of all, it's super easy to use. Second of all, it dries in 30 minutes and it cures in six hours. So the fact that it cures in six hours makes it such a great application for fabric to keep it soft, to keep it, um, to seal it, to make sure it's good to go, right? All right, so before I continue, just to let you guys know, in the description, everything that I use, the paints that I use, the brushes, the easy peasy wax, the sanding sponges, is all available from your local retailer. There is a link up in the description. If you click that, you can find your local retailer. And please, if you try and order from your local retailer first, we always wanna give to small business because Small business is what makes this world go around, right? Isn't that like the American dream? So give to your small businesses first. If you do not have a local retailer, um, reach out to me on my page. My information is up at the top there, and I can help you get what you need, okay? All right, so it's a clear matte spray. This is the Easy Peasy Wax. It's super easy to use. I'm going to stop talking for a second because I want you to hear what it's like when you're getting this ready to use, all right? All right. So before you use the Easy Peasy Wax, you always have to shake it very, very well. And you can tell that it's shaken well because you won't hear it mixing anymore. It actually, you can feel it kind of solidify inside of there and then you can't shake it anymore. All right, so you guys ready? All right. Hear that? So it was pure liquid. You shook it and now it's hard as a rock. Well, it's not hard as a rock, but it's definitely thick. <laughs> Probably should rephrase what I was saying. So it's thick. All right, let me grab. I had a piece of fabric. I'm going to watch right, right there. I'm just going to grab a piece of fabric that I had that I forgot to put down. I just want to show you guys how it sprays onto the fabric so that you can see what it's going to do when we put it on. This is actually an apron, an old apron. Um... I have these laying around, thank goodness, because I have four Dixie Belle aprons, and you know what? Where are they? I have no idea. I have no idea. My husband cleaned my workshop, and I'm pretty sure he did some with my aprons. He won't admit it, because he won't. All right, so, <laughs> so these are shaken. Watch, guys. Watch how thin this mist is. So you're going to apply a thin coat with this, all right? Look at that. Super thin. Isn't that awesome? You're gonna apply that. You're gonna take another dry brush and you're just gonna rub it in. So let's take a brush over here. Sorry guys, I have my brushes down over there. And then you're just gonna take that brush and go over your fabric. We can't do it on this because it's still wet, but you're gonna go on your fabric and you're just gonna put it on. I personally do two coats on the fabric. So I will let this dry lightly sand or buff should I say you can take a nice microfiber cloth too once you've because you're going to sand before you do the easy peasy wax then you can buff it with a microfiber cloth and then I would do another coat because for me personally I like that softness it dries really soft and velvety just like wax isn't that great all right, so what else can you use easy peasy wax for besides fabric? I know we're working on fabric tonight, but while we got it out, let me explain to you how great this is for certain applications. See, it's already starting to solidify. I had to, I mean, to liquefy. All right, 
This is great for spindles. Like if you're working on chairs or other things that you're waxing, you can just spray this instead. It's really great because sometimes it's kind of a pain to get in there with wax. It's great for spindles, chairs. Um, I use these on smaller tables. I use the Easy Peasy Wax. Super, super easy use. Gives great, great coverage. But again, perfect for fabric. Perfect. All right. So I'm going to go over again about what we use tonight so that you guys can have be fully prepared because I am hoping that you guys try this on fabric. Just try it on one thing. You will be hooked, 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 okay? So you're going to use your paints and you're going to use water. It's going to be a 50-50. I used Hurricane Gray on this, so it was 50% Hurricane Gray paint, 50% water. You're going to use a brush, typically um, one that might be a little stiffer. is sometimes easier as well. I used my Dixie Belle Oval Medium, this one right here. This is the brush that I use. You're going to paint, since this is still wet, I can show you. Again, you're going to paint in circular motions because you want to push that paint into that fabric, okay? Push your paint into your fabric, circular motions. You're going to let it dry. It's going to take approximately three to four hours to dry thoroughly because you want it to dry thoroughly. All right. Once it dries, you're going to take your sanding sponge. Here's your sanding sanding sponge. This is a 220 on this side. You're going to take your sanding sponge, and you're just going to lightly sand. You don't have to push too far down. You're just going to lightly sand just to get that hardness off of there because, you know, it's obviously it's paint, so it has a little bit of a hardness to it. But if you go ahead and you sand with it, it takes that hardness off of it. It makes it soft. Then you're going to do another coat. I personally am going to do three coats of paint on here only because the paint is so watered down that I just want really good coverage. I want to make sure that the color that I use is really, really, really bright, the, as bright as gray can be, but I want it to be bright. So in between each coat, you're going to sand very, very well. At the last coat, when you sand, you're going to take this awesome Easy Peasy Spray Wax you're gonna shake it till you can't shake it no more. You'll notice that it solidifies inside and then you will lightly spray, take a microfiber cloth just to kind of buff it in and then let that dry. It takes 30 minutes to dry, do another coat. And then after that, you wait six hours and it cures. Do local dealers give classes for beginners? Peggy, that's a really good question. Um, honestly, reach out there's a link up in my in my thing that has any of your local dealers up there you can reach out to them and see if they offer classes i know with covid we stopped doing classes in person because it was just too tough to teach from a distance that you needed to be to be safe i'm not sure i know some people also do um video consultations i do video consultations like i have customers that reach out and i will video with them and and help them and kind of go over all their things that they need help with and how they can work with it but reach out to your local retailer and the link is up in the description to find your local retailer and maybe they can help you if not reach out to me on my page and i see if i can help you with something okay um can you dilute it, do it without diluting the paint and just spray the fabric with water? You know, Patricia, I'm not sure if you could. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm going to let Dixie Bell answer that one. I personally do it 50-50 because I want it to absorb into the fibers. Because if it's too thick, it'll just sit on the top, okay? And you don't want it to just sit on the top. You want to make sure that it absolutely absorbs into the fibers. Nancy said, can you do this on outdoor cushions? Well... Here's the thing. You could do it on outdoor cushions, but how are you going to seal it so that it doesn't have weatherproof? Um, that would be the only thing that I would be concerned about, only because once you put, like, gator hide, which would waterproof it, it's because it, that, that hardness again, because gator hide is a poly cover, it's a coating, so um, it would just be to figure out how you would keep it weatherproof, unless you're just going to take them in so they don't get weatherproof. I personally wouldn't do outside cushions with them. However, Dixie Bell might have a better answer for you on that one, too. So sometimes the answers I don't have, Dixie Bell. Yeah. Um, and Dixie Bell said about, yes, you could, you could, but you may add too much water, so we suggest diluting. Yes, yes. Uh, Lynn said she did it that way, but it looks, but this way looks easier. It is very thick. Yeah, it is very thick when you add it straight from the paint. It's a little harder to get it into the areas that you need it to get into, so... 
All right, so I'm just gonna recap. Recap a little bit here. Um, Dixie Belle said, yes on outdoor cushions. All right, Dixie Belle is right on it. This is why I love this company. They literally, you can use this paint and you can use their products on literally just about anything. It's, it's like a lifesaver for me. I transform my whole house. My husband's like so tired of me painting and, and redoing stuff in our house. So I don't know, maybe I could help you do stuff in your house instead. <laughs> All right, guys, so in the description is where you can find your local retailer to purchase any Dixie Belle products that you might want. Please look for your local retailer and give to them first. Support small business because that's how our economy stays alive and the American dream happens, right? Um, also, join our chalk paint enthusiast groups. That's where our brand ambassadors, people like myself, people like you are all in there. There's lots of great videos and tricks on how to do things. Um, if you need help there, if you ask questions on there, People jump in all the time to help. It is amazing. It is, um, what is it my son always says? It's a plethora. It's a plethora of information for you. So join the Dixie Bell Enthusiast Group if you haven't, and they can answer so many questions for you. And last of all, all of my information is in the top. If you enjoyed this video, please flip over to my page and follow me. I do come on Dixie Bell's page at least a few times a week. And uh, I'm sorry, not a week, a month. <laughs> Sorry, not a week, a month. And I love doing the videos for them. So please join me again here. I won't be on until next month because of Thanksgiving. So next Thursday, I'm not going to be on. But I will see you guys next month with something new that we're going to do. And then, again, my stuff's in the description. Please jump over and join me and say hello. And if you need help with anything and you can't get an answer, please, please reach out to me. I always love helping people. After every one of my lives, I always get at least three or four um, messages from people asking me questions. And that's what I love, love to do for you guys. All right. All right, guys. I am praying that you guys all have a wonderful, wonderful night. Have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Everybody stay safe and I will see you after the holidays. Bye everyone.